Distinguished guests, ladies, gentlemen, college staff and students, my name is Indiana Derota, 2021 college captain, and I welcome you to our fourth year 12 graduation ceremony at Pinpoint State Secondary College. Before we begin our proceedings tonight, I would like to welcome Lily McGoldrick to give the acknowledgement of country. Pippama State Secondary College staff and students acknowledge the people of the Yugambeh language group, the traditional custodians of the land on which our school is built and our learning takes place. We pay our respects to elders past, present and emerging and recognise their connection to country and ways of sharing knowledge over thousands of years. Thank you, Lily. Can I please ask Morgan Strom to the stage and everybody to be upstanding for the national anthem? Australians all and us rejoice for we are young and free with golden soil and wealth for toil our home is girt by sea our land abounds in nature's gifts our beauty rich and rare in history's page let every state advance Australia fair in joyful strains and let us sing advance australia fair please be seated thank you to both lily mcgoldrick for our welcome to country and morgan strom for our national anthem good evening everyone and welcome to our 2020 senior graduation ceremony my name is Nigel Myers, and along with my fellow college captain, Indiana DeRoder, we have the honor of being your hosts as we acknowledge the graduating class of 2020. Tonight, we extend a warm welcome to our special guests, Mr. John Thornberry, college principal, and Ms. Angela Ormond, deputy principal for senior school. Welcome to parents who are present this evening, and parents, relatives, and friends who are watching via live stream. Thank you for joining us to celebrate on this special occasion. I would like all of us to take a moment to acknowledge our guests of honor, our year 12 students. Tonight we are gathered here to recognize and celebrate their journey thus far, and also to wish, wish them the very best in their future. So please join me in congratulating the grad, graduating class of 2020. Seniors, tonight is your special night and we hope you enjoy it. The cohort of 2020 have achieved so much during their final year at Pimpama and it would be remiss of us to not acknowledge just a little of what they have accomplished along this journey. Please welcome to the stage Miss Angela Ormond, Senior School Deputy Principal, to give an overview of Year 12 achievements this year. Good evening parents, staff, invited guests and graduating year 12 students. Well, it's been a busy year and a very busy final few weeks. Our students have been sitting external and internal assessments. They've been finalising traineeships and apprenticeships. They've been finalising other qualifications over the past 19 days. And I've had the privilege to be a part of their final semester of secondary education here at Pimpama State Secondary College. Students, your final days with us should be about celebrating the successful end of your senior schooling journey and all of the excitement of what is to come. As you turn this page to move into your next chapter, I'm here to celebrate and reflect with you upon some key achievements. Let's look back on your journey so far. You have been the first. You were the first full group to commence prep and you were the first full group to start high school in year seven. You've been the first group to move into the new QCE, sit external examinations, utilise an ATAR, and not to mention finish year 12 during a pandemic. Your achievements demonstrate your resilience. 
You've made it through it all to be here tonight. Year 11 and 12 is not easy and you should feel a sense of pride. 244 students started as our fourth cohort of year 11 at the start of 2019. And now there is 192 of you who are graduating from senior schooling at Pimpama. Congratulations to each and every one of you that you are sitting here. That is an achievement. One that has required perseverance, integrity and dedication. As a group, you've con shown continuous improvement across years 11 and 12. And it's this continual effort and improvement that sees us on track for 100% of the 2020 cohort to achieve and receive their Queensland Certificate of Education or their Queensland Certificate of Individual Achievement in December this year. It would be easy to take this achievement for granted and assume that getting the QCE or QCIA is easy. But what this 100% attainment reflects collectively is a massive amount of work and dedication to success across a diverse range of pursuits. This includes vocational pursuits. Our graduating year 12s have engaged and completed more vocational qualifications than any group previously. Throughout 2019 and 2020, 74 of our tonight's graduating students were enrolled in externally delivered vocational courses in areas including business, hospitality, retail, tourism, early childhood, health, hairdressing, beauty, construction, automotive, aviation, music, justice studies and electrical. Seven students have even completed an external course at the diploma level and another six at certificate four level in conjunction with their year 12 studies. All of these vocational studies have required a significant amount of commitment and perseverance that's because students who study these usually also study six subjects at school. These students must balance schoolwork with at least one day of external study or work placement. I also want to acknowledge our group of senior transitions to external pathways or STEP students who are part of this graduating group tonight. You have also neg successfully negotiated the fast track path of completing your senior studies with a combination of vocational certificates, work placement and traineeships throughout to, um, 2020. We have 79 students pursuing tertiary pathways by applying for an ATAR and tertiary entrance. And tomorrow, the first announcements of early offers will be um, released. Each student who has worked towards an ATAR or tertiary selection rank this year has always strived to achieve their best. And consequently, as a group, they have given themselves the best opportunity to receive their preferred tertiary offers come January. Regardless of the pathway that you've taken to graduate or to get your QCE or to get into university or go directly into a vocational pathway, I hope you all feel proud of the job well done. I have thoroughly enjoyed watching your successes over the last five months and I wish you all the best in your future endeavours. Congratulations. Thank you, Ms. Ormond. We have a slight change to the program. Due to restrictions to space, unfortunately, our dancers will not be performing tonight. Instead, we have a special video to show you. This incredible short film was produced and directed by Year 12 student Joel Leach. Does becoming an adult scare you? Oh, kind of, I guess. It's not something that I want to do. I mean, I'm enjoying myself right now. I'm just doing my own thing. Yeah, but, uh, you know, there's all things that um, scare you when you get older. You know, it's just something you'll become accustomed to. You'll get used to it and it'll become normal life. Why do you think it scares you? 
Uh, I had six years to get my life together in high school and, um, well, I kind of wasted it. The amount of responsibilities, like funds and stuff, and taking care of many different things. There's many responsibilities and a lot of unknowns that I'm not sure of right now. Yeah, the uncertainty is just because you go to grade, because when you're born, you go to grade 12. That that's all you know, and then after that, you're on your own. Throughout our youth, becoming an adult felt like it would give so much freedom. But as we draw nearer and nearer, the innocence we once held seems to slip away. And the fear and uncertainty of our hopes and dreams seem to grow more and more. Peter Abraham, 17, year 12, physiology and medicine. Um, Jennifer Osborne, 18, year 12, and I want to do business and marketing management. My name is Samar, I'm 17, I'm in grade 12. And I would like to be, I'd like to do something in business. Eli Hart, 17, year 7, year oh. 7, year 12. And um, I don't quite know. Where do you see yourself in a year? In a year's time? Um, um, I would just take it as it is. I'm not really trying to plan into the future. Just take life as it goes. Uh, in a year, I see myself back here in Australia doing university. In a year, I hope that I can um, maybe move out of home, start to find like what I really want to do with my life, um, and really just kind of find out who I am and kind of make a difference in the world. Um, I want to pursue a career in law, do start at maybe at the bottom like policing, make my way up to like lawyer, and possibly if uh, a judge. Do you think your attitude towards school has positively or negatively affected your future and where you want to go? <clears throat> I think I think it's positively affected it. Before when I first came here, I was so scared. Like I was shy. I was that kid that was like, I didn't know what to do. And then as the years went on, I took up more leadership positions and I, you know, kind of put myself out there. And doing these sorts of positions, I have not only like become a more extroverted person, but I've also like broadened and I figure out what I'm comfortable in and what I can do. And I think that being involved in activities like Are You OK Day, all those sorts of leadership events, it just makes it a lot, yeah, positively, yeah. <laughs> do you think at one point in your life you'll look back and see all your childhood growing up and then you realise at that point that you're an adult? I think it has more to do with your perspective on life itself. I'd say more like, you know, you becoming your own person, you doing your own thing and taking responsibility for yourself. I think people use the term adult to try and make themselves feel accomplished when that isn't really what they're doing. They're trying to make an excuse for themselves to feel accomplished. What accomplishment really means is to keep going forward. I get to being, you know, in my late 20s and look back in my life and see what I've accomplished and then look forward to seeing what I have to do still. At the same time, like, I know that it's not the end because I know that there's still more memories and everything to be made, but like you look back on it and it's like, you're growing up and all that has to come to an end soon. Please give him a round of applause for the talented Joel Leach. Our graduating students are only the fourth cohort to come through and complete their high school education at Pimpama State Secondary College. Someone who has been here since the very beginning and has supported them every step of the way is our college principal. Please welcome to the stage, Mr. John Thornberry.
Good evening. Could I also, uh, <coughs> on behalf of staff and students, acknowledge the people of the Yugan Bear Language Group, the traditional custodians of the land on which our school is built and our learning takes place. And can I pay my respects to elders past, present and emerging and recognise their connection to country and ways of sharing knowledge over thousands of years. Well, good evening, everyone. And can I congratulate Joel too on a, uh, a wonderful short film there. And um, actually, I'd ask everyone to keep that, that film in mind as I um, speak tonight because it has a, a lot of themes in common uh, with what I'll talk about as we go on. But um, we are here to uh, recognise our graduating cohort, our latest cohort, our class of 2020. Can I acknowledge and welcome the parents uh, and family that are here tonight? And can I also welcome and acknowledge those family that are watching online as well? So tonight is more than just the end of a 13 year journey that started in primary school and ends tomorrow morning. And I think um, as Ms Ormond recognised before, for this graduating cohort, I think you are definitely deserving of a little more recognition than perhaps those that have gone before you. Because let's face it, the three graduating cohorts that uh, we have celebrated in this hall, um, you know, they have achieved probably what we could uh, say would be the minimum expectations for a Queensland student following uh, 13 years of attendance at school. But I think you guys are set apart because you faced a brand new curriculum over the last two years, which can I say uh, is far tougher than the previous curriculum. And I can speak from experience. I had a son graduate under the old curriculum two years ago and I have a daughter in year 11 now and as a parent that sits and does their best helping them with their assignments and homework, I can attest to the fact that it is way more difficult. Um, you faced three years, uh, three weeks, I should say, of external exams, which for some of you doing maths and science subjects, that counted towards 50% of your final score. And you faced this challenge in a year, of course, which will long be remembered for the pandemic that swept the world. And while we have, as, as a country have escaped largely unscathed, we can cast our minds back to the early days of this year where that was never a guarantee. Schools were shut down in Queensland. Events were cancelled or modified like they are tonight. And for some of you, I know the impact has been felt hard at home. So I do acknowledge it has been a genuinely tough year and that you have done an amazing job in navigating your way through it and supporting each other and extending your faith in the school and your teachers to help you achieve all that you have. So if ever a senior cohort is, I think, genuinely deserving of recognition and genuinely deserving of the opportunity to celebrate tonight, it is absolutely the class of 2020. There is an expectation that as principal, I um, impart a few words of wisdom, I guess, um, that some of you hopefully will find useful. When I walk into this hall, um, and see the images of the lions out there in the foyer and you know, our pride branding, I can't help but think about the uh, Disney movie The Lion King. And so I'm going to use this movie tonight as an analogy for life and hopefully some of you at least have seen it. If you haven't, early in the movie, Mufasa, who's the, uh, the Lion King, uh, takes his son Simba to the top of Pride Rock and tells him that essentially his kingdom constitutes everything the light touches. And he forbids Simba from going to investigate what is beyond the confines of the light. Now this might seem like good advice because to go beyond the world that you know, to step outside the boundaries within which you feel secure is to take a huge risk. However, the risk in not taking that step is that you will never grow. The knowledge that you have now and everything you believe to be true will never be challenged. So as a person, you'll never grow. You will never become more knowledgeable than the person you are now. And for those of you who have seen the movie, and this is a spoiler alert if you're planning on it, 
This is, of course, where Mufasa comes unstuck because he lacked the knowledge and the insight that would have helped him see the true evil intent of his brother Scar and, of course, that cost him his life. So this concept of the lion's kingdom, much like Joel's uh, movie, is the concept of your immediate world. It's what you know and what you understand. And I think the danger for people in the 21st century is that for many of you, you live not just in a physical world, but you live in an electronic world where the platforms that you interact with will only let you see what you want to see. The advertising you see is based on the data that's being collected on you. The suggested friends and contacts are based on the contacts you already have and the posts you make and the, the comments you like. And so in some respects, you've become a micro-celebrity surrounded by electronic sycophants who do nothing but tell you what you want to hear. So both the physical world of home and school and the online world are your kingdoms. But if you never go beyond them, if you never engage with people who offer a different perspective, who challenge your views and who teach you things that you don't know, then as Joel said, how do you move forward? Of course, in the movie, Simba is forced out into the world beyond the kingdom he knows and, into the, and beyond the world he feels comfortable in. And doing so, he meets animals, in this case, that he would never have met before. Uh, Pumbaa the warthog and Timon the meerkat who challenge his knowledge and his value system and you'll remember their values in the song perhaps Hakuna Matata which is literally translated from Swahili as no worries but what it really means is no fear and over time he grows he gets more knowledgeable and wiser even more so than his father because he does what his father failed to do and he goes back he defeats Scar and becomes king becomes better than what he was and he only achieves this because he goes beyond where he's comfortable and safe. He experiences things he wouldn't have experienced. He meets people who offer him something different. He overcomes challenges. In her book Thrive, Ariana Huffington uh, offers similar advice. She asks you to imagine that you're on a train journey and you can control who rides with you on that train. The people you invite on the train should be those with whom you are prepared to be vulnerable and real with, people that will strengthen you when you falter and remind you of the journey's purpose when you become distracted by the scenery, people that will challenge you and give you honest feedback. She says you need to take charge of the people you let on board and more importantly, take charge of the journey you go on. So I know that your time here, well, I hope your time here has been a lot of fun and the memories you take from here will be positive, but don't let this be the end of your journey. Don't be satisfied with your 18-year-old selves. You're great young men and great young women, but you aren't even close to who you could be. Always aim to be better than you were yesterday, and tomorrow aim to be better than you are today. Set yourself challenges, take risks, be vulnerable, allow yourself to be uncomfortable. Don't be afraid of not succeeding, Get out beyond the light of your kingdom. Surround yourself with people who are going to help guide you, challenge you, and help you grow. Find friends who will support your upward aim. Find mentors who will teach you. Find a cheer squad. And don't be afraid to divest yourself of people who are none of these. Usher them off your train. I like to end graduation speeches, I guess, with what um, has become my personal mantra. Your parents are very proud of what you have achieved. We are very proud of you and you should be proud as well, but it's just the start. Ahead of you stands life in all its beauty and grandeur, in all its challenges, disappointments, celebrations, heartache, tears and laughter. Ahead of you stand the people you are yet to meet, the places you are yet to go. Ahead of you stands those you may love and the families you may create. Ahead of you stand the dreams you are yet to realise. Ahead of you stands the person you are yet to become. Ahead of you stands life. Now get out and live it. Well done. Thank you, Mr Thornberry. 
Well, it's down to that part of the ceremony where we officially acknowledge our graduating students. I'd now like to invite Mr Thornberry, <laughs> our Senior Head of Department, Chanel Morrison, and our Senior Student Advisor, Ms Amy Nolan, to present the certificates for our, to our graduating class of 2020. As they make their way to the stage, we will be completing this process in two stages. The first half of the cohort will get announced now, whilst the remaining half will be presented after a short musical performance. Peter Abraham. <laughs> Jack Adams. <laughs> Paige Adams. <laughs> Angelica Akancha. <laughs> Zachary Anderson. Liam Armstrong. <laughs> Sherlyn Marie Badio. <laughs> Cody Baird. <laughs> Samar Bajwa. <laughs> Cooper Barrett. Brady Beatham Smith. <laughs> Tia Buket. <laughs> Thea, sorry. Thea Buket. DeAndre Bevan. <laughs> Casey Beveridge. <laughs> Vanessa Boychenko. Hudson Bosenberg. <laughs> Hannah Boschia. <laughs> Kiralee Bradbrook. <laughs> RJ Brewer. <laughs> Shayla Bryan. <laughs> Ella Brown. Damon Butcher. <laughs> Mitchell Campbell. <laughs> Jacob Carney. <laughs> Jonathan Karawizi. <laughs> Yasm Yasmin Carter. Sonu Chandrasekhar. <laughs> Reese Colbert. <laughs> Slow down, your parents want to see you on stage. <laughs> Holy moly. <laughs> Bree Collins. <laughs> Claire Dave. Um, yep. Jacob. Karakan, Claire Davidson. <laughs> Reagan Davies. <laughs> Ollie Derbyshire. <laughs> Letitia Desmond. Matthew Demonish. <laughs> Joshua Dixon. <laughs> Declan Dockery. <laughs> Caleb Doherty. <laughs> Anastasia Drought. Georgia Dyer, 
Jaden Eason. <laughs> Hannah Easton. Gabrielle Edge. Campbell Edwards. Joseph Filimbu. Fakado Fern. Brianna Florian. Taylor Folbig. Ashley Fortain. Caleb Fosbury. Summer Fraunfelder. Konami Furukawa. Astrid Gelvin. Sophie Garrett. Isabella Georgiakopoulos. Acacia German. Blake Garzak. Emma Good. Annie Goodlock. Rachel Grant. Molly Greaves. Kyle Gribben. Leonie Grindrod. Lily Gilfoyle Hansen. Alia Gullum. Sebastian Hack. Lincoln Hadfield. Brooke Harden. Miranda Harrison. Ty Harrop. Eli Hart. Me. Jacob Hoha. <laughs> Jasan Honui Fioki. <laughs> Quest Hidawai. <laughs> Amber Hohenotdorf. <laughs> Kiara Hooper. Noah Howard. <laughs> Mariah Howell. <laughs> Courtney Hunter. <laughs> Shirley Ann Hunter. <laughs> Bailey Jackson. Kaylin Jackson. Sarah Kate Jackson. Ryan Johnston. Colby Jones. Case Kane.
Manahi Kara. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Samuel Kickbush. <laughs> Ethan Kitt. <laughs> Cameron Knowles. <laughs> Jason Korzak. <laughs> Indeja Kuvaji. <laughs> Thomas Laban. <laughs> Pauline Legatus. <laughs> Ellie Lang. <laughs> Joel Leach. Tane Lees. <laughs> Haley Leggett. <laughs> William Liang. <laughs> Emma Locke. <laughs> Next up, performing an original music piece, Dylan Thomas. Thank you, Dylan. That was a very amazing performance. Now to acknowledge the remaining students in our graduating class of 2020, please welcome back Ms. Morrison. 
Ms. Nolan and Mr. Thornberry to help present the certificates to our students. Alia Lomas Spano. Kobe Lunsdale. Annalise Mars. Emma Marnie. Paige Ma. Paige Mahuika. Haley Mapu. Michaela Marchant. Sky Marchant. Tamika Martin. <laughs> Namaya Matafa. <laughs> Tai Matangi. <laughs> Jordan Matthewman. <laughs> Charlotte McClintock. Miranda McDean. <laughs> Lily McGoldrick. <laughs> Jackson McKay. <laughs> Zachary McKay. <laughs> Meg McKeever. Helena McMahon. <laughs> Sky McMahon. <laughs> Jerry Menegazzo. <laughs> Isabella Meredith. Jenea Milford. Zach Mitchell. Lachlan Mulligan. Tristan Neves. Vanya Nakuru. Mia Nodda. <laughs> Polycarp Ochan. <laughs> Jade Osborne. <laughs> Jennifer Osborne. <laughs> Alia Otto. Kira Palmer. Ellie Parker. Lauren Patterson. Caitlin Paul. Verity Percival. Lorencia Pirangi. Tyrese Pirahi. Jaden Popata Mohi. Ephraim Porter. 
Mackenzie Poulton. Kalia Posnick. Brandon Raghavan. Christopher Raghavan. Gabrielle Raghavan. Joshua Ramani. Jacob Ramali. Harley Reynolds. Tom Rogers. Claire Rogerson. Lanisa Rapati. Taylor Rollins. Tyson Royal. Kanu Ruoporo. Christian Sinovic. Taylor Saville. Samantha Sice. Rebecca Simon. Diamo Sioni. Lexi Smith. Morgan Strum. Hayden Swain. Lachlan Symes. David Sims. Kian Thayers. Dylan Thomas. Samantha Thompson. Matthew Tiato. Marcus Toymata. Brandon Toss. Jack Trubel. Jordan Truloff. Kai Villa. Gracie Walsh. Joshua Ward. Blake Ware. Jaden Webb. Natalia Weber. Brianon Wells. Tatiana Wilden. Sophie Williams. Yeah. 
Hayden Wilson. Joshua Woodhouse. Maddie Zerillo. <laughs> congratulations to all students and also a big congratulations to all the parents, families, staff and broader community who have supported you in attaining this milestone achievement. I now invite Year 12 student Liam Armstrong, our College 2020 Ducks, to present the valedictory speech. Thank you for that welcome, Miss Morrison. Um, can I just say, this is one of the last times we'll be all wearing the same matching uniform for a long time, and I'm kind of sad. And it's actually good to see that my friend Hayden Wilson, for the first time this year, is actually wearing the formal uniform. <laughs> so, <laughs> glad it wasn't a complete waste of money to your parents. Um, <laughs> good evening, and welcome to Mr Thornbury, members of staff, overwhelmed family members, and of course us, the graduates of 2020. Before I start my speech, I wanna take some time to mention two important groups of people. Now, I'm not gonna stand up here and thank every single person who has helped us get here today, but I do want to mention some certain individuals who put us before themselves and would literally, not metaphorically, take a bullet for us, our parents. I know my mum has sacrificed weeks of her time and constantly supported me even when I gave up on myself. And my dad, he has shown me what discipline is, how to be the best version of myself and to give 100% in everything I do. I know that all of your parents have done the exact same thing for you and I want to formally thank every single parent that is here tonight. And now who else has been there for us every single step of the way over these last six years? Our teachers, of course. Our students would be nowhere without your guys' tireless efforts, week in, week out, trying to make learning enjoyable and fun, even if it only works 80% of the time. Because of you, I have embarked on many pathways I did not think I would explore. And while I appreciate every single one of my teachers, I want to give a special mention to the one and only Mr. G. Yeah. I don't think you realise it, but you were such a huge influence on me in these last five years, ever since grade eight, and have made me so excited to learn math and science, something which is not easy to do for a lot of kids. And I'll always remember you and cherish your lessons. Now, as the valedictorian, I'm supposed to talk about the future, which is kind of ironic. I'm supposed to talk about something which is yet to come. Honestly, other than the fact that one day each of us sitting here today will die, Nothing is determined. <laughs> and, <laughs> and even that is not planned. Maybe scientists will find a way to make us immortal. That is, if we haven't been wiped out by some Chinese bat virus first. <laughs> now, nothing is determined. Nothing is planned. I like that idea because it means that everything you want depends on one thing, you. You are responsible for your successes and failures. You are responsible to determine your future. You are responsible for breaking the status quo. It's not your parents, your teachers, the society, the economy, or a virus that determines who you are. They might make it easier or harder, but at the end of the day, the power to change your life uh, was, is, and always will be in your bright hands. Now, I'm not going to be the typical valedictorian and say, yes, you can, life is a fantasy. I could not, because I'd be lying. Sometimes, life is like a dark tunnel with no light and no escape, and each of us, including myself, will fail many, many, at m many times. But each hit, each fall, and each failure will only make us more bulletproof in the future. And often on graduation day, we look to the outside for heroes to give us inspiration but I see all the inspiration right here in front of me, among us. Personally, I'm inspired by our classmate and good friend Caleb, who strives to one day be an astronaut for NASA. Yeah. Yeah. 
a goal that I do not doubt that he will achieve. And to all the music students, Sam, Matt, and Jason, who have applied to the James C. Music Academy, and Kyle, who has applied for the New York uh, Film Academy, I hope to see you guys performing on the big stage one day because you guys are rock stars. I'm also inspired by my good friend Hayden, who will make the choice to serve our country in the army. I honor you for making that choice and I'm proud to know you. Each and every one of you is inspirational in your own way, and I do not doubt for a second that whatever goals you will set out to achieve, you will accomplish. So when you leave here today, celebrate what you have accomplished, but keep an eye on the future as the next few years will require your hard work and determination. I look forward to seeing you all one last time at the formal, and congratulations to the graduates of 2020. Thank you. Thank you, Liam. Now, for the final time, may I please welcome to the stage 2020 Senior College Captain and Vice Captain Jennifer Osborne and Brianna Florian. Okay, good evening everyone. So, here we are. It feels like yesterday that our parents forced us to take first day of school photos, wearing our oversized school uniforms and bags that were bigger than us. We would be so nervous to walk into our classroom, even though our most difficult task of the day was simple addition and subtraction, or trying to fall asleep during nap time. I remember when I was in primary school, seeing all the singers graduate amazed me. They were all so much bigger than us preppies, and I remembered from that moment I could not wait until I was like those singers graduating. I was so excited to cross the finish line because when I was young, I didn't understand that graduating meant growing up. For me, standing here right now saying this speech feels so surreal. This entire year has. I feel like when we're young, we were so naive and keen to graduate just so we could leave school and be able to sleep in or not have to do homework. But now that we're here, I realize that I really am going to miss this place. Not necessarily the workload or externals or even the lines of the tuck shop, but definitely the people. I'm going to miss my classmates, my teachers, and my co-captains. I'm going to miss walking into school on a Monday morning and having to remember that the school timetable has changed five different times this year and that class starts at 8.50 and not 9 o'clock. I'm going to miss the banter with my teachers and I'm going to miss the memories made. There were so many amazing memories this year and I'm sure if you can't think of any right now, when you leave here today, you'll realize how much you took for granted. I say this because I feel that over these past years, the only thing we thought about seeing a year was leaving and graduating. But now that we're here, it feels surreal. That uneasy feeling of growing up and graduating, of being thrown into the real world, as, teachers, as, as our teachers called it. When we were young, we never thought of those feelings. We just thought about being free. I'm so lucky as to have been a part of this cohort since 2016, because over these past five years, we've all grown together. From our combined dislike of Wise Up and Teal to the shock of seeing everyone at the beginning of year 10 wearing white shirts. Speaking of growing as a cohort, I only feel that it is appropriate for us to acknowledge the staff and teachers who have shaped us into the people we are today. I see many staff in the audience right now, as when our cohort heard that teachers weren't allowed to come and see us graduate due to COVID, some students used their one ticket to invite the most influential and special teachers to them. But seriously, where do I begin to appreciate our teachers? From the games and fun lessons they'd plan for us, to the pizza feeds, or even just listening to us and getting to know us as people, even when we were annoying juniors. I would also like to acknowledge the parents who are here or are watching live right now. Without you, we wouldn't be the people we are today either. We have so much to thank you for, whether it be driving us to school or just being there for us. Can I please ask that you join me in giving all the teachers, staff, and parents that are here right now, or who were, or who were unable to attend, a round of applause. Even though this year has been nothing short of a test, I really do believe that it has built us into better people, people that are ready to cross the finish line. So here's to the class of 2020. Thank you.
first year class of 2020. Well, we did it, a 13 year long journey, a journey full of ups and downs, tears and long nights, and yet through it all, we still made it here tonight. Just look at how far we've come, how much we have each grown. I mean, honestly, for me, standing up here and seeing all of you just makes it feel that much more surreal. The fact that we have made it to the finish line. For most of us, graduation seemed like it was never going to come. With endless piles of assessments and exams stopping us from reaching our goal, often we would wish for it to come quicker. Looking back, I wouldn't wish for anything to have changed. For me, the best part about it all was the connections we made, the memories we created. Memories of getting ready each morning, countless sleepless study nights, endless handball matches, and obviously the overcompetitive games of Kahoot. For most of us, senior year was memorable, but it was also tough. As individuals, we each have achieved so much, but as a cohort, we have pushed through what seems like an impossible and unpredictable year. Honestly, what a year it has been. This year has definitely been interesting, to say the least. Being the first year of graduates on ATAR was already hard enough, but when COVID-19 came along and, well, changed how we imagined our senior year would go. It definitely wasn't easy trying to study home, and I do have to admit there were times where I just wanted to lay in bed bed and binge watch Netflix all day. Even the thought of graduating seemed impossible. But through it all, it was these experiences, challenges, obstacles and breakdowns that united our cohort and shaped us into who we are today. Ultimately creating strong, resilient, self-driven, determined and passionate individuals. Individuals ready to do amazing things. I can't express how proud I am of everyone in this room. I'm saying that, and in saying that, I ask that you give yourselves and the, round, and the people around you a round of applause. I would like to leave you with a quote from world round philosopher and influencer, Winnie the Pooh. How lucky am I to have something that makes saying goodbye so hard? As much as I've always looked forward to graduation, I've always disliked goodbyes. In the end, it's the small moments that make you remember the most and the bonds you make with the people around you that make it so hard to say goodbye. I am truly gonna miss you all and our time spent here. I know that after formal, we are all going down our separate paths, but I wanna wish you all the best of luck for the future. No matter what the next chapter of your life is, you will be ready to overcome anything in your way. I know that this may feel like the end, but we have so much more to be excited for. Now, with the finish line finally in sight, I couldn't have wished for a better cohort to graduate with. Be proud, because after all, we are the ones that made history. Thank you, class of 2020. Thank you, Jennifer and Brianna. We would like to present our year 12s with a cake to say congratulations on your achievements and we wish you the very best for your new adventures and all that life has in store for you. Sorry, I wish that we could show you, but I um, don't want to tip it. <laughs> A big thank you to everyone for attending tonight and helping us acknowledge this special milestone. Before you go, we would like to present a video celebrating the journey of our graduating class of 2020 one last time.
Tastes like strawberries on a summer evening And it sounds just like a song I want more berries and that summer feeling It's so wonderful and warm Breathe me in, breathe me out I don't like a song I want your belly and that summer feeling I don't know if I could ever Across the bar, my seat's been taken by some sunglasses Asking about a scar and I know I gave it to you months ago I know you're trying to forget But between the drinks and subtle things The holes in my apologies, you know I'm trying hard to take it back So if by the time the bar closes And you feel like falling down I'll carry you home Tonight
Thank you. This now concludes the main proceedings of the graduation ceremony. Graduation cake will be served from the canteen window. If you need any tissues, bathrooms are over there. Have a safe trip home and good night. <laughs>